Hello and welcome to another Planet Destiny video. In this video I'm going to show off the new Crucible and Vanguard weapons and the armor, and give my impressions on which weapons you should buy first. You can go ahead and check out the article on the site, which will be in the description if you'd like to see all of the other faction weapons. In this review we'll attempt to outline our top picks for May 19th, so you can be ready right when the ball drops. Be sure to also check out our Best Buys Before They're Gone guide, a list of the best pre-House of Wolves weapons. As a disclaimer, keep in mind that every one of these weapons is ready to reforge, which is to say that assuming you like the base stats, you can spend moats until you get a variant you're happy with. And first off, before we get into everything, I have to give a huge shout out to YouTuber DPJ for sending us these videos. I was at the Bungie event with him, but unfortunately I didn't get a chance to see the vendors due to time constraints, so he was nice enough to send this footage over so I could use it in this video. Okay, so first up are weapons found at the Crucible Quartermaster Vendor. The Void Shotgun Hard Luck Charm is sporting two new House of Wolves perks, and they're interesting enough that we think it could be a fun shotgun to try out. The first is Battle Runner, which grants a boost to the sprint's top speed after you land a kill with the weapon. We've yet to see this one in action, so we can't confirm on how drastic it is, but it is an excellent perk in theory for a shotgun. You land a kill, you use your new speedy pace to close the distance to another enemy, and rinse and repeat. Its second perk is Grave Robber, another wild card at the moment. Depending on the proc rate, this could be stellar for both ammo conservation and effective mag size. If it's around 30%, this shotgun would be ideal for at least PvE. If it's even higher, then it'll be seen a lot in PvP. However, if it's 20% or lower, we'd probably hold off on recommending it. Unfortunately, the Hard Luck Charm doesn't seem to have any way to increase its base range, despite its great base stats, and the Void Damage is easily the worst for PvE, as only Minotaurs will really be affected by it. Still, keep an eye out on this one. Next up is the Hand Cannon, Up the Ante. It's another Crucible weapon with two brand new perks, so it could be a worthy purchase on day one. The first is Army of One, a supercharged version of Grenadier that also works on your melee, providing you can get a kill unassisted. Fortunately for hand cannons, this is usually a trivial matter on tier 1 or even tier 2 enemies, as a single headshot will usually do them in. The second perk is Hot Swap, which grants a brief boost to initial accuracy as you ready the weapon. For hand cannons which recently have been nerfed to reduce initial accuracy, this could be an excellent way to guarantee those early hits is nicely synergistic with Army of One. It looks like it has the 2281 Fatebringer rate of fire and impact, which is arguably the most well-rounded class for damage and fire rate. It also has Small Bore, a new third row perk that increases both range and stability at the cost of reload speed, and an unspecified reduction to magazine size. So what about the rest? The Auto Rifle Lowdown PXIV is standard pre-House of Wolves fare, and at best will just be another for the people or up for anything. Pass on it for now. The Rocket Launcher Pax Totalis has pretty middling blast radius in addition to no tracking or proximity detonation in exchange for Army of One or Final Round. There are better solar launchers out there, so give this one a pass. The Scout Rifle Zero Point LOTP could work for you, but Third Eye and Triple Tap aren't revolutionary for a weapon that thrives at a distance and has plenty of ammo to go around. The base stats are strong though. Finally, the Sniper Rifle Subtle Nudge has the new perk Hidden Hand to help with target acquisition, but is a low impact model and has no Field Scout to compensate. It might be worth re-rolling this once we see the Aim Assist stat. Up next are the Vanguard Quartermaster weapons. 55A All Fate is the new Vanguard Pulse Rifle, and it has an impressive base stat profile that's proven to be both PvP and PvE effective. It also sports Hidden Hand, which grants it excellent target acquisition. This perfectly offsets the penalty from its new third row perk, Casket Mag, which boosts the magazine size in exchange for a reduction to accuracy. Finally, it also has Grave Robber, which could, given appropriate proc rate, encourage an in-your-face style of play to keep that giant Casket Mag frequently full. Because of this excellent potential synergy and Pulse Rifles being a very strong option, this one should be at the top of your list. 1-1 Synthet is the legendary Mitre replacement. Outlaw remedies its middling magazine size, while Battle Runner makes it a mobile killing machine, depending on how potent and how long-lasting the buff is. 
Its fast base rate of fire looks at a glance to be the exact same as the Mida and previously Dead Orbit exclusive Crypt Dweller, which is able to hammer rounds home at a serious pace. Explosive rounds works well with this rate of fire, though not terribly well with Outlaw, or you could opt for small bore for a little more range and stability at the cost of admittedly precious round in the small magazine. Still, if you've wanted to try a faster firing scout rifle, this could be a new option for you. So what about the rest from the Vanguard? The Auto Rifle Pest Control Matrix looks like it could be a great purchase if they ever buff auto rifles again. Otherwise, it's just sitting as a living testament to how overboard the nerf went, as it is a return to the Shattered Price Grim Citizen rate of fire and impact class. The Fusion Rifle Give Take Equation is almost a carbon copy of Plug 1.1, which means it's a great fusion rifle, but it's nothing really new. If you like your Plug 1.1, just ascend it when you can. It should be worth mentioning that you should be ascending your armor first though. The Sniper Rifle Amplified Geo D6 has disappointing void damage and an irreconcilably low impact and magazine size with a really perplexing shoot to loot combo, so really there's nothing to do here. The heavy machine gun Sawtooth Oscillator sports extremely low range and reload speed, which makes this weapon a bit more undesirable. The vendor perks aren't anything to write home about either. Finally, let's take a look at some of the Queen's Armament weapons. There aren't any default perk sets for these weapons, and they do drop from every difficulty of Prison of Elders, including level 28, in case you were looking for a reason to actually run that a bunch. And they all have a random set of perks, but are reforge ready if you aren't satisfied with your RNG role. We can say that the high impact sniper rifle, Her Benevolence, should be a high priority reforge for those of you who enjoy doing massive amounts of damage with a single shot. Considering the disappointing default snipers from the vendors, it seems even more appealing to pick this one up. The hand cannon Her Mercy has low range and stability, but might be a real prize with the right perks. Definitely check this one out. The auto rifle Her Hand is similar to Grim Citizen and Shadow Price with its rate of fire and impact. If they ever buff auto rifles again, this one is a surefire winner to pick up. The heavy machine gun Wolfsbane looks to be a beastly damage dealer. Hopefully, you can get a roll to address the horribly low stability. Otherwise, this thing looks like a real gem just from the stats. The Pulse Rifle Payment 6 is one you should really not be excited about. Its low base range and stability are a disappointment. Fortunately, there's plenty of other Pulse Rifles out there that you can use, so go check all those other ones out. Finally, the Fusion Rifle Techie on Force seems to be a worse Plug 1.1 or Trolley problem. Its lower range and stability is what keeps me from recommending it, even though its impact looks like it could tear a hole through time and space. Finally, what appeals to you? House of Wolves has wisely given us the freedom to reforge its new weapons, but still has plenty of great gear to be had on day one. Everything previously mentioned are just our opinions of the vendor's standouts. They could easily prove to be better or worse than we anticipated, but we feel comfortable in saying that you won't have buyer's remorse if you pick out a couple of your favorites from our recommendations. What do you think about House of Wolves weapons so far? We'd love to hear about it in the comments. I hope you enjoyed a look at the new weapons coming in House of Wolves. This has been Patrick Casey with Planet Destiny, your guide to the Destiny universe.